I know that you are so excited to sew the 9833, but the success of any sewing project is having the right fabrics, the right trims, the right notions, and everything cut out correctly. So in this video, I will be going over all of that. What fabrics to use, what elastics, notions, but also showing you where they are used on the finished piece. I think that is very helpful. Before I get into that, I wanna go back to something that I said in the first video. Uh, I started off by saying that this is an advanced sewing project, but I don't want anybody to hear that and think, I can't make this, I can't make this. The key to success are these sew-alongs, and I know that. And my goal with this sew-along is to show you all the tips, the tricks, the instructions, um, so that even if you are a newbie, you can master this. Even if you are advanced, you can learn something new. Um, so I didn't want anybody to listen to that and think, oh, I can't make that. You can, and I will help you do it. All right, so let's first go over what goes in uh, the panty as well as the bra. These are two of our DIY bra kits. Um, and I think that it's very helpful too when I pull out the fabrics and the trims to show you where it is used. Um, so I'm gonna pull this out really quickly. And our DIY kits come with um, a little uh, card with where to buy Madeline's first book. Yes, I'm coming out with my first book, uh, November of 2023. Okay, so first things first, main fabric is a Lycra. So it is a four-way stretch Lycra that comes in the kits. Um, you can use Lycra. You could use uh, an all-over stretch lace are some options to use. Um, those are the ones that I recommend the most. Then the other one is lining. So uh, we use a stretch mesh for the lining. Other lining options uh, are power net. Um, if you want a little bit more support, you can use power net. Um, you can also use sheer cup lining, 15 Danier Trico, bra tool. Those are all nine stretch uh, bra linings. So we use a stretch lining option and we use it in the frame as well as the back bands. That is where we use the stretch mesh or the power net or um, lining. If you are using a non-stretch bra lining, you only want to use it in the frame. You do not want to use it in the back band. You want to use a stretch lining in the back band so that when you wear the bra, the frame is stable to support the way of the breast, but you need stretch in the back in order to uh, be comfortable for the bra to move with your body. The next uh, thing is the uh, embroidered lace uh, tool or, or stretch galoon lace, non-stretch galoon lace. Now this pattern was drafted for non-stretch lace, but let's just say you have a stretch lace, you found a stretch lace that is beautiful and you want to use it. I want you to use it as well, um, but you might have to size down or make some adjustments to the sizing um, in order for it to work. Now the thing you have to keep in mind with the scalloped lace, and all scalloped means uh, scalloped galoon lace is that it has an edge that is finished. You want it to be wide enough so that it will fit your cup pattern pieces. Um, that will depend on the size that you make. So you'll have to look at the pattern pieces for your size, look at your lace and see if it fits on there. All right, so fabrics are a little bit easier to decipher and what to get. It's the elastics that people really are like, oh gosh, I don't know what to get. Um, what is fold over elastic? What is pico elastic? What are strap elastic? So that is what I'm going to go over. So first thing that you need is fold over elastic. So fold over elastic, all that means is that it folds ooh, over. Um, and we use that. Uh, we use the wider fold over elastic on the bottom edge of the bra. Let me unhook this so that it's easier to see. So we use fold over elastic 
on the top edge of the bra all the way to the straps on the bottom edge of the bra, uh, the wider fold over elastic. We use a narrower, a, a narrower uh, fold over elastic for the edge of the foam cups. Um, I will say that if you are full busted, if you are plus size, you might want to add like a wide band elastic here. Um, we have fit it on some people who are full or busted who are outside of that size range but are using the tip that I gave Gave, combining the larger front with the smaller back band. A wider bottom band is going to give you a little bit more support, um, but we the pattern was drafted to use fold over elastic on the bottom edge. If you decide to do a wide band elastic, you will just have to adjust the hook and eye. You might have to cut down the back band because you'll have more length here. Um, so use wide fold over elastic. Also, narrower fold of elastic. It's really hard to see like the fold because it's black on camera, but it does have a little indentation down the center um, where it folds. Um, and we just use that on the top edge of the quarter foam cup. Um, then we use the channeling, underwire channeling, and that goes on the wire seam line. Now you can, it's optional to put it on the uh, side seam. So definitely want to use photo or ch sorry, definitely want to use channeling on the wire seam line. Optional to use channeling on the side seam with the boning. I'm going to leave that up to you. Some people like it, some people don't. I always like to give the option and let you make an informed decision. So that is channeling. Strap elastic, pretty self-explanatory, is that strap elastics are used for the shoulder straps. Uh, rings and sliders, also pretty self-explanatory in that they are attached to the straps. They are what makes the bra straps adjustable, especially as you wear a bra, um, the elastic will give out over time. Um, that's just the nature of elastic. So having adjustable shoulder straps allows uh, you to tighten the straps as the elastic stretches out for uh, just from wearing it. Um, also, you need a three by three hook and eye. That is for the back. Um, and the last thing is the rubber elastic. Uh, this rubber elastic is key, especially to larger cup sizes and full bust. You might be thinking, where the heck does this go, Maddie? So this is, we actually sew this into the fold over elastic and it will give just more strength to that fold over because by itself, that fold over is not gonna support the weight of the breast, especially with a larger cup size. Um, we'll get to how it's inserted once we get there. Um, so that are the uh, fabric and supplies. Um, notions though, hardware, and I consider a mono wire a hardware. Boom, mono wire. And since we're, we have the mono wire here, I think you know where that goes. But since you have the mono wire here, I want to show why it's important to get the right size mono wire. And I'm, listen, I gotta stay in business. So yes, I would like you to purchase from Madeline, but I understand that not you're not gonna buy everything from Madeline. Um, but I wanna show you in this case to purchase the mono wires that we had made for this style. So if you see here, if I lay the this over this, and this is stretching out a little bit, you will see that the curve of this pretty much matches the curve of the wire seam line. If you buy a mono wire that let's just say it's a little bit flatter here, maybe it's a little bit more you, no matter how well you sew that, it's going to cause drag lines because the shape of the mono wire does not match the shape of the pattern. Okay, so mono wire. Um, and then of course the last thing, the last notion is the poly laminate foam. Um, now, so we did have some that came in the kits that were white, some of them that were black, so you might have gotten a white one or a black one, but essentially it's the same thing. It basically is a layer of foam that is laminated to a fabric. Um, it comes in different widths, 
eighth of an inch, it can come in quarter of an inch. If you want more of a push-up effect and a little bit more support um, and lift, I would buy one that are a quarter of an inch wide versus like an eighth of an inch. So this is called polylaminate sheet foam, bra foam. Um, this is readily available. You can actually get this at Joann's. You can get it off of Etsy. Um, so very easy to find from a bra maker. Uh, bra making supply store. Next, let's go on to the panties. So trims for the panties. Fabrics and trims for the panties. Pretty much the same. Actually, exactly the same, just used differently. So we have our main fabric, which is the lycra, and that is used in the center front piece. The center front piece is lined with mesh. All of the other pieces are just, just one layer of mesh. So this is just one layer of mesh. This is just one layer of mesh. This is just one layer of lace. And the back panty is just one layer of mesh. You have the skinnier fold over elastic for the cutout edges, as well as you might want to use them for the... Um, the leg openings, um, but the skinny folder elastic is intended to be used for the fold, for the leg openings. And then the wider folder elastic goes along the waistline. All right, so now that I've gone over, oh, and then you have your um, cotton jersey, which is used for your gusset. Um, now that I've gone over all of the fabrics and the trims for the bra and panty, showing you where they are, let me show you what you should have cut out. Now let's go over what pattern pieces you should have cut out, what they should be cut out of, as well as some little tips and tricks for cutting out. Uh, for the bra, you want to have pattern pieces one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight cut out. For the for seven and eight, this is lycra and then lined with uh, stretch mesh. If you are using a different uh, a non-stretch fabric for your lining, then the uh, front frame will be lined with that and then the back band will be lined with a stretch fabric. Um, there was a person who uh, commented or questioned the labeling of the side front as well as the side front pa uh, padding. Um, so the padding really just is another word for foam. So you have your side front padding and your front padding. Both of those are cut out of just one layer of foam. Um, you should have two of each. Um, for all these pieces, you should have two of except for the front frame because this is cut on the folds. Um, and the side front, it's just the side quarter cup. That's all that it means. Um, and then the front is just the front quarter cup. Um, and then the cup side front and the cup front are just the galoon lace. Now, something to keep in mind when you're cutting this out is that when you sew them together, well, actually, it's probably easier for me to show this on the fabric. But if you're using a galoon lace, you have these scalloped edges. And when you sew them together, you want to make sure that when you sew them together, that they match at the same point when on the seam line. So when I am cutting this out, I will lay this on the lace. You can mark the seam line here. And then you will mark the seam line on the other pattern piece. And just make sure that on the seam line, it is hitting at the same place on the scalloped edge. So that when you sew them together, you don't have, here's a great example. You don't have one scalloped lace or one scalloped edge here and then one scalloped edge below there. So that when you fold them over, one's above the other. See, that's not lining up. You want them to line up. So you might have to just take some time to look at it double check, make sure that on your cup pattern pieces, that at the top edge of the cup that they are hitting, the seam line is hitting at the same spot on the galoon lace. Um, mm -mm, let me put that back there. So the cup front Pattern piece number five, as well as pattern piece number six, the cup side front, is just one layer of the galoon lace. You cut two of them. Um, and then the back, is that it? Okay, so 
that's what you should have cut out for the bra. Some other things that I wanted to mention was that, and I know they're going to come up because we're sewing lingerie, what needle and thread should I use? Okay, so Microtex or stretch needles. Um, Schmetz have some great ones. The size is going to depend on the uh, the type of fabric that you're using. Um, 80 or 12 uh, is a good uh, kind of base that could go between like thinner fabrics versus thicker fabrics. Um, for power net, we use 14. For just like one layer, we'll use like 10. Um, so you want to use uh, Microtex or stretch needles. Another thing is thread. I cannot recommend enough the Guterman's Mara 120. This is fantastic for lingerie. You can get that from waywack.com. That is definitely, I think it's a US based um, company, but uh, if you're in the US, waywack.com is an excellent source for them. Super fast shipping as well amazing color range. Um, if you're outside the U.S., you might have to just do some searches of your local sew shop or wherever you um, purchase your sewing supplies. Um, another, if you have been following Madeline, you will know that I will never do a sew along without mentioning my golden, uh, uh, I don't even know what to call this, my favorite bra making tool, Otis 505 Spray Adhesive. Okay, so what is this? If you've never heard of this, uh, this is a temporary spray adhesive that I use to spray base the main fabric and the lining fabric prior to cutting. So everything is cut out now, but before I cut out the uh, frame as well as the back band, I laid out my Lycra, I laid out my mesh, and I will give you a quick demo. I won't actually do it, but I will demonstrate it to my best ability. Is that I laid out my mesh. I'm working with a small space here, so you just have to use your imagination and pretend like we are working in a giant space and I could lay this out. And then I'll lay down my Lycra. And then I'll fold one back. And then I'll ch -ch 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 -ch. and then I'll lay it down. Boom. And I'll press it. And then I'll put my pattern piece over. And then I'll cut it out. For me, it was a game changer. Fabrics weren't shifting, causing drag lines. It was Oh, great. Now it does, I will admit, it does get on your cutting mat and you just have to be conscious to clean it. Um, you, there are several ways that you can clean it. Um, power wash, which is a type of uh, detergent, uh, dishwashing detergent, really helps to get it up. Um, some people actually, when they are cutting with the Otis, they will take their um, dry cleaning bags, the clear bags, put it over, the, slip it over their cutting mat, then spray it, and then take that clear plastic bag off so none of the glue actually gets on there. Um, Matt, you can also just put paper underneath as well. Um, so those are a couple tricks th so that it doesn't actually get on your cutting mat. Listen, it gets all of our cutting mats. My our other cutting mat, our other cutting mat at the other end of the studio is absolutely gross. Um, but we do a lot of cutting in here. All right, so let's go on to the panty. What should you have cut up for the panty? So I'm gonna try to fit this all on one screen or all on the frame, even if they're not laid out in the correct orientation. Okay, so we have 11. This is for the thong version. Um, if you're if you're making the full uh, brief version, it'll be a little bit different. But the back piece, which is number seventeen, is one layer of mesh. The thong back or the full back is just one layer of mesh. Number eleven um, is one layer of mesh. Uh, Twelve is one layer of the galloon lace. Thirteen is one layer of the um, mesh. So every pattern piece in the panty is unlined except for the front piece. And that is one layer of lycra lined with um, a layer of stretch mesh. Okay, so that those are your supplies. Those are your fabrics you should use, supplies, what to have cut out. Now we can get into sewing. In the next video, we will start sewing the bra. Um, I like to give people 
just a little itinerary of how things are going to go. So in the in the um, sew along, we will sew the bra in its entirety, and then we'll move on to the panty. So I will see you in the next video.